Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Here's how we're going to start this video. If you knew just how bad it was, you would probably be shocked. Now, I'm saying this mostly just to kind of paint a picture. It's the idea of the video. The reality is most of you guys know exactly how bad things are and exactly what's going on. You don't need an explanation from me. But just for the people who maybe aren't paying attention or the people who might have missed this particular story, in this case, the most extreme theory, what sounds utterly unbelievable, well, that is exactly what's happening. There's been a lot of claims that the Venezuela government is straight up emptying their jails, packing up their violent criminals and murderers into boats and shipping them straight to Miami. And now we've also heard that Venezuelan gangs are taking over neighborhoods in the United States, taking over apartment buildings, even squatting in people's homes and using them essentially as drug trap houses and gang headquarters. You've heard the claims and maybe in some cases you might have thought to yourself, well that seems a little bit extreme, that's a little too crazy, there's no way that's actually happening. But unfortunately, I mean unfortunately for the nation, that's exactly exactly what's happening. And now it's Groundhog Day, we got Dr. Phil once again exposing the world to the actual truth behind the headline, what's really happening. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so here's Dr. Phil once again on his new amazing podcast, exposing important truths that the mainstream media is trying so desperately to avoid. A lot of them are committing crimes because they have uh, been released from prisons in Venezuela. They're coming with criminal histories. Uh, they're beating up police officers. They're, you know, they're killing our Americans. They're raping our kids. They're doing all these horrific things, and it doesn't surprise us. I'm, I'm the first one to tell you. Not everybody that comes to this country commits additional crimes, but we have a high percentage of them that do. Venezuela, by the way, has the lowest murder rate ever right now. What does that tell you? Yeah, all the murderers are gone. They're here. Yeah. So is it true that they're empty in prisons? I mean, is this, this is not, Cuba this is, all over th again? This is, not, this is not a hearsay. There was a memo by DHS last year admitting that, in fact, they knew that Venezuela's government was emptying their prison and rehabilitation centers or drug centers, releasing them on purpose because they knew with instructions to make, if you were going to get out, you're going to make your way to the U.S. That is not... We're not making that up. That that that's true. It was it was reported on, and DHS admitted that that was happening. And in fact, it has. El tren de Aragua is heavily present in our country now. Okay, so you're telling me that DHS has acknowledged that Venezuela, for example, is emptying their prisons and their rehabilitation centers with the understanding you get out if you leave here and go to the United States. Yes, and DHS has in writing said, we know that's happening. We know they're coming here. We're processing them in and have no idea where they are. Correct. How many people are we talking about? Millions. And just Venezuela alone. We're talking about in the last two or three years, we've had estimated how many people have come across the border. My estimation, the, the official number I think is about to hit 10 million. Yeah, it's about but, 10, 10, 11 million. Yeah, yeah, my, that's the official. But my personal opinion, I think we're about 15 to 18 million. Okay. That right there, folks, that's exactly what's happening. It sounds like a plot from a movie. It sounds unbelievable, but it's literally exactly what's happening. Four nations have figured out a cheat code. How to achieve public safety. Simply take advantage of the current idiotic administration that's running the U.S. into the ground. These ridiculous open border policies just take advantage of that and ship all your criminals abroad. Who needs actual public safety initiatives when you can literally pack all of the criminals, all the violent gangsters, on a woke version of Noah's Ark, just pack them all up and ship them straight to the U.S. to infiltrate the nation's most vulnerable neighborhoods. Absolutely insane stuff, and these are the people who are saying that you need to vote for them, otherwise you're supporting fascism, or you ain't black, or whatever, you know, argument it is. On any given day, you have to vote for them. Vote for them for what? So they can continue to destroy your nation? That's exactly what they're doing. Turning a blind eye to the chaos and destruction that they're sowing. I think, honestly, the latest Trump ad really puts it into clear perspective. It is are undocumented immigrants that are the least likely to commit a crime. <laughs> Police report as many as 75% of the people they've arrested in Midtown Manhattan for assault, robbery, and domestic violence are illegal migrants. Police have tracked down a killer whose crimes span the country. Rachel Marin was dragged from a hiking trail in Maryland where she was... 
and murdered. Police say Brandon Ortiz Vite used a handgun he bought illegally to shoot Ruby Garcia multiple times on Friday. The prime suspect charged in Lake and Riley's murder was 26-year-old Jose Antonio Abara. He illegally entered the United States back in 2022. The Texas grand jury indicted Rafael Govea Romero. He's accused of attacking 16-year-old Lizbeth Medina by repeatedly hitting her head and stabbing her. <laughs> so let's get our notions together about what we're talking about. They're attending their galas, they're boozing and schmoozing it up with fancy people and fancy celebrities, drinking expensive wine and walking around with ornate jewelry worth tens of thousands, in some case hundreds of thousands of dollars, living a merry life while they inflict actual damage and chaos on the people that they're supposed to represent. It's insane. I mean, you would think an issue of this magnitude would be addressed intensely and harshly by those in charge protecting the citizens of their nation, but instead they do nothing. Recently, I mean, look at the data on screen. 75% of arrests in Midtown and 60% of arrests in Queens, the majority of violent crime arrests, are now illegal migrants. But meanwhile, the Democrats pretend this issue doesn't even exist. They call you a conspiracy theorist for even suggesting that this is happening. As the story developed in Colorado, the Democrat governor of the state, Jared Bolas, essentially dismissed it as fake news only to then look like a complete liar and a fool a week later when multiple exposés started to drop. Says this is a picture of gang members breaking into a vacant apartment so they could move a Venezuelan family in and then collect rent. According to the law firm's report, the Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua has threatened to kill and in certain instances has apparently actively attempted to kill members of Whispering Pines Management. The report says a consultant for the property management company was severely beaten and stomped by gang members and was hospitalized. <laughs> A new at 10, it's scenes coming out of a movie as the Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua are seen breaking into apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado. This is according to our sister station in Denver. There you can see the group well-armed and forcing an apartment door open and making their way in. You got old ladies barricading their doors because they're living in these apartment complexes. Every day when we come home, we have to do this every time we go outside to take out the garbage. Every time we try to go to bed at night, we have to keep it like this so nobody can kick in the door. People are experiencing legitimate fear. They're in legitimate danger. But Democrats just pretend like it didn't happen until they were forced to admit that it's happening because the truth started to get out. You know, the cat got out of the bag. As per usual, the typical Democrat MO, we only do something once it becomes politically inconvenient. Now we have activist organizations teaming up with Venezuelan gangs, launching this campaign to try to convince the American people as if it's not happening. Okay, so I just found out something very interesting about the East Colfax Community Collective, that group that put on the migrant protest yesterday. The one that was trying to change the narrative and say that Trende Aragua is not overrunning that apartment complex that everyone's at and that everyone's been reporting fake news. Yeah, that organization I found out is funded in large part by the city of Denver and the city of Aurora. Yes, the same city, the same government officials that have been trying to cover up this story and trying to downplay their migrant crisis. I found out that the organization yesterday that wrote out all of those signs in English for the migrants and told them, hey, if you don't want to get evicted, you have to talk about um, not Trenderaba being in the area, but instead the slum lords. Let's talk about that instead. That organization is funded by the city. Very interesting. Now, I'm also on the ground with uh, Frontlines reporter Jonathan Cho. He went last night and he spoke to a different migrant who lives in this apartment complex that wasn't a part of that uh, protest yesterday. And this man was so frantic trying to pack um, because he shares that migrants have been getting extorted, that he specifically has been getting extorted and that quote, Mexicans have been going door to door and asking people for money on top of the rent they're already paying. So Jonathan Cho is going to be coming out with that story from the same apartment complex. They're calling it a fake news story, but it's anything but fake. We've seen these gangs operating on CCTV footage in these buildings, walking around with guns, selling drugs, trashing the neighborhood, trashing the buildings. And really, it makes me question, what won't Democrats defend? Democrats seem willing to defend the most heinous, most extreme of situations in action. 
elections as long as it guarantees that they defend themselves within the political arena. Folks, let's really put it all into perspective. They've created a situation where foreign nations are emptying their most violent of offenders and funneling them straight into your neighborhoods. Democrats know it's happening, they're letting it happen, and then once it starts to get real bad, once you realize that these criminals aren't really asylum seekers that are just looking for the American dream, a white picket fence and green grass, and once everything goes to crap, the Democrats are trying to shove it under a rug and pretend like it isn't happening, and even using some of their little activist groups to claim the stories are fake news. Meanwhile, people are being robbed, attacked, murdered, the list goes on and on and on. What else need I say? I mean, seriously. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.